Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Um, this is a much requested video since I mentioned it in last week's kind of updates thing. Um, a lot of you said um, that you would be interested in me doing a review of this wonderful book, Plantopedia. Um, now this is, <laughs> this is a hefty book. I mean, it is, you know, biblical <laughs> in size, um, but very, yeah, I suppose you could say encyclopedic. <laughs> um, funny that. Uh, this is a very lovely big book. Um, it was written by Lauren Camilleri and Sophia Kaplan of Leaf Supply. Um, now Leaf Supply is, as I understand it, a indoor plant um, seller and delivery service in Australia. Um, they also have an Instagram account and they have previously published two books, I believe. Um, so always worth bearing in mind the origin of your book because if there are plant care tips in there, um, it's worth uh, being mindful that some of them may be based on that part of the world rather than the part of the world that you are in. Um, however, having had a look through this book, everything seems to be fairly like uh, Britain friendly, <laughs> um, for want of a better word, like in terms of houseplant care, not in any other terms. Um, so I think you're probably all right with that if you're living in the UK and probably to be fair, any other um, northern hemisphere environment because they do include cold climate instructions um, against all of their plants. So it's fairly like good for everyone sort of thing. I'm very bad at structured videos. If you don't already know, I struggle with these because uh, my brain is all floofy. Like in the words of Phoebe, my brain is floofy. Um, so the RRP for this book is £30 um, in the UK um, or $40 in the US or $55 Canadian dollars. Um, which is fairly reasonable, I think, for this uh, such a big book. It is about what you'd expect to pay for most encyclopedic type books. Um, personally, I love this. This was given to me as a gift by my lovely mum for Christmas and I, oh, I am just over the moon with this book because it is so aesthetically pleasing. It is such a relaxing read. Um, it's a great coffee table book, but also has like some decent plant care tips. And also um, what you'll probably notice as I show you how um, how it's kind of laid out, it also has a lot of plant facts about the plants or genuses um, that it covers. So um, what I am going to do for this video is I'm going to kind of flip us around and show you the inside of the book. Um, not like this, but I will show you kind of how it's laid out, what the key features of the book are, what kind of sets it apart from other books and stuff, and just give you kind of an overview of what the book includes and um, yeah, some good things, some things that I would improve if it was my book, um, but it's not my book. So, you know, just for interest. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think we are probably going to get straight into it to save on time because there is a lot of wonderful stuff to show you um, in this book. So I am going to waste no further time and just flip us over. So this video might be a little bit long, I guess. I'm not really sure. I haven't edited it yet, but it might be worth grabbing a cup of tea so that you can relax. Okay, guys. So honestly, this is... Uh... <laughs> I wish you could see me now. This is quite an awkward way for me to be filming, but um, <laughs> uh, you you live and learn, don't you? Um, right, so let me get this framed right. So we've got a few um, front pages um, just as normal in any kind of book like this. Um, with some actually some really beautiful kind of pictures throughout this book, to be honest with you. Um, so here we've got the contents page with some beautiful illustration. Um, so we, first we've got connecting with plants, um, which is kind of just, I think, their explanation of what they find um, really positive about the plant hobby. They've got a brief history of house plants, um, a guide to plant classification, which is just kind of briefly telling you um, how 
plants are classified in terms of the nomenclature or the naming um, and sort of Latin names versus cultivar names, um, etc. etc. Houseplant cultivation, a brief kind of look into that. How to use this book, which is actually really handy because they use kind of not quite keys, but like shorthand um, indicators for their plant care on here. Uh, we have troubleshooting, uh, which kind of takes you through what signs to look out for and what to do um, if your plants are struggling. And then we have pests and diseases, which, you know, always handy. Um, then we go on to page 40 to 300 is full of uh, foliage plants. Um, so you kind of do snapshots of different genuses and um, several different species or cultivars or hybrids within that genus. Um, and then 300 to 390 is cacti and succulents. Uh, we have the glossary um, on page 390. Then we have the visual index on 392, which is really cool. I have to show you that. And we have a couple of other indexes, um, which is actually really handy. I like maybe this is nerdy, but I'm in love with the indexes um, on this particular book. Uh, but we'll get on to that. <laughs> then we have the proper index, uh, contributors and thank yous. Um, so first page is about connecting with plants. Um, this is, you know, kind of sort of like your average magazine type piece um, on what makes the plant hobby really cool um, to people in the modern day. Um, and all throughout we've got some lovely, lovely pictures. Hopefully you can see this okay. Yeah, there we go. Um, then we've got a history of houseplants, which is actually really, really lovely to look through. Um, again, it's not sort of super long it's just two pages um nice and concise so you're not going to kind of glaze over reading through this it's just you know you could what to not to be too crude but you could read this um you know in a toilet session <laughs> um please don't unsubscribe <laughs> um on the history of houseplants i just want to kind of call out that i think this is really cool and makes me like this book even more um, we've got a note on the history of botany here which says in addition to acknowledging the often white western role in the world of botany and horticulture we feel a greater discussion is needed about the ways in which the science was established often at the detriment of first nations people in the pursuit of cultivating economic crops for empire building local inhabitants were often exploited for labor and their history and knowledge of local botany was ignored or erased Despite the language commonly used by many of us, it stands to reason that European botanists were not the first to discover certain plants, rather they were the first to record them using Western methodologies. This is indeed a complex issue and there is a lot of learning to be done within the industry to address the history of many national bot botanical collections around the world. We all need to educate ourselves about the true narrative and listen more deeply to the First Nations people in an effort to make the world and our plant-loving community a more equal place. And, um, you know, to me, that just makes me kind of go, I really like this, these people and I think they really deserve you know my money if i if my mum hadn't bought this for me as a gift um but i appreciate this book so much more with that acknowledgement um because it really is true um and i think something that is underplayed actually um in botany and the botanical world is how much um botany is eurocentric um and very westernized and it's not fully appreciated given that most of the plants that we absolutely love come from as they say first nations people or first nations themselves um and it is a and has been very much a subject uh to erasure so uh yes let's continue on <laughs> I just thought it was really important to um, point out because it was something that I really appreciate about this book. <laughs> then we've got plant classification, which is um, just again kind of in brief on how um, plants are classified with their botanical name, which is uh, based on Linnaeus. I never know how to say that. Um, Linnaeus is nomenclature uh, using Latin names. 
uh, the first will be the genus and the second will be the species. Uh, it kind of goes through all that, which is always really handy if you're new to the plant hobby. Um, and also explains how uh, hybrids and cultivars are named as well, so you can easily identify them. Sorry, this is kind of blowing out um, the wordage. So you see, we're, we're all learning here, okay? <laughs> right, so cultivation. Um, this kind of goes into how plants are cultivated um, en masse and in uh, businesses, which is actually really interesting, especially if you haven't kind of learned about this in the past. Um, again, it's not, it's not loads and loads and loads of detail. Um, so it is fairly easy going, um, easy to read, but I love, 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 love this particular picture. As you can see on this picture, hopefully, um, we have some crispy leaves um, and I just want to kind of rejoice the fact that we've got crispy leaves in a published book <laughs> because I think, you know, we all spend a lot of time being brainwashed by Instagram and believing that everything is perfect um, and feeling bad about our plants. But truth be told, that is the nature of nature. Um, you know, plants grow and die and they react and all sorts of things. So they're never going to look perfect. Um, so I'm really overjoyed to see that. And we've got a couple, some lovely, lovely double page spreads in here. Um, just a kind of a classic greenhouse slash botanical garden type um, layout here. I just, I love pouring over pages like this, to be honest with you. Then we've got um, how to use this book, which I think they've set this out really nicely, actually. So in here, um, it gives you a kind of introduction and then goes into how they, um, how they, what's the word? It's like a key, like I said, it's, it's, it's like a key, but not a key. <laughs> um, so you've got under care level, we've got novice, um, which will be what they write next to a plant that kind of is low maintenance, green thumb, which is kind of the middle ground. You know, you've got pretty good at your plant care, but you're not necessarily an expert. And then expert, um, <laughs> which is for, in their words, the drama queens of the plant world. And then we have similar under light, we've got low to moderate, bright indirect and full sun. Um, and then we've got water, um, low, moderate and high soil. We've got well draining, moisture retaining and coarse and sandy. Um, humidity, uh, none and then low and medium and high, uh, because we've got so many different types of plants in this book, you know, we need a lot of different types of humidity. Um, <laughs> and it also indicates to you what kind of propagating is appropriate for the plant that you're looking at. Um, so as an example, stem cuttings, um, or you might have division or plantlets and offsets, leaf cuttings. Um, and then we've got growth habit, which is really handy. It's not something that I think I really looked into um, in the past. And also, oh my gosh, what a beautiful begonia. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's not something I really looked into in the past, but I think I'm starting to find that a lot more interesting about different plants. Um, and I am ashamed to say, I don't know how all of my plants grow. Um, I have a few very small philodendrons, for example, that I am still not yet sure how they grow. Um, so that's quite cool. And then we've got position. Um, so they give you some, oh, that's blown out. One second. Right, and then we've got position. So they give you some kind of suggestions for um, where your plant might do, bleh, <laughs> where your plant might do well. Um, so we've got floor, tabletop, windowsill, bookshelf or stand, and covered, covered co why is that hard to say? Covered balcony. Okay, um, and then we've got toxicity. So this is kind of for the pet friendly slash child friendly um, people amongst us <laughs> who have those roaming around. Um, so we've got toxic, mildly toxic and pet friendly. Um, and that is kind of how they indicate things throughout this book. And what a lovely picture this is. I just, I could look at this book for like years. Now, um, we've got a page on troubleshooting and um, this is perhaps, I think for me to be honest, 
the one of the two only downsides um, to this book. So we do in this kind of cover over quite a few um, troubleshooting tips. However, you know, they're fairly generic. They're not necessarily plant specific. Um, and there's no real kind of example pictures, um, which I think, um, you know, the average plant parent could really benefit from. So that would be what I would suggest to improve this book. And also same for the pests and diseases, because we are kind of missing out on the pictures. We've got all the details that we really need. Um, but if you don't know what they look like, you're kind of in trouble, aren't you? Um, so, we, you know, we've got aphids, fungus gnats, mealybugs, uh, scales, spider mites, etc. Thrips, white flies, bacteria and viruses, um, and fungi. And, you know, given how like beautiful all the pictures are in this book, I don't think it would have been a great stretch to add some photos of those in or just illustrations. Um, but there we go. Um, you know, this isn't necessarily a an expert plant care guide. It's more of a coffee table type guide. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a, a minor criticism it probably would be something i would want to include if it was my book but you know all things considered i think this is still a fantastic book uh right so let us continue on to the foliage plants now would you just look at this lovely spread i mean i i'm gonna have to look at who illustrated this book because i love 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 these illustrations um so we come straight into the Hoya. So I'm just going to go through a few just to kind of show you how it's set out um, because I think <laughs> the way that they do it is actually really cool and makes it really coffee table friendly. I know I keep saying coffee table. It might be because I'm really craving coffee right now. <laughs> um, so basically you've got the, um, the genus, which is Hoya. Let me bring this up here. You've got the genus, which is Hoya, um, and then they list the family. I'm not even going to begin to try and say that. And here they give a kind of a summary of um, the genus itself and a little bit of history where it's found um, and occasionally some really interesting facts um, about that genus. Um, and it just kind of has for each one, it has a selection of different species within that genus. So. This is a good example of how they're laying it out. So you have a picture on one side or maybe on the same side. Um, you have the name of the uh, genus and species. They often give the common name uh, where there is one. Um, a little summary up here about the specific species. And then we've got these details here. So, you know, I was saying before um, on the how to use this book section, we've got on this one, we've got care level, novice, um, light, bright and direct, water, low to moderate, soil, well draining, humidity low, propagation, stem cuttings, growth habit, trailing, position, bookshelf or stand, and toxicity, pet friendly. Um, and this is just kind of a little um, note section, I suppose, um, kind of giving you some more detail um, and perhaps some interesting facts about this specific species um and also some kind of troubleshooting tips occasionally um like this one it says as with most epiphytic hoyas the wax plant likes its roots to be snug so don't rush to repot it um so you know it's not going super super in depth but it's definitely got you know enough to get started with this plant on here um so i'll just show you a couple more we've got hoya matilde um which is a cultivar which i completely forgot <laughs> Um, and sorry, not a cultivar, a hybrid, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, hybrid, not cultivar. I get, I get myself a bit mixed up with the difference between hybrid and cultivar. So yeah. Uh, right. Then we have got Hoya carnosa var compacta, um, and we've got Hoya carii. We've got quite a few Hoyas actually, which is nice. Hoya linearis. I mean, you know how much I love my Hoyas, so, you know, happy days. Um, and then we move on to another genus um, and the same begins again. Um, so we've got some gorgeous, gorgeous photos. Um, Pilea, some beautiful, beautiful plants in here. Pilea sp no ID. <laughs> oh, I just got to stretch my legs out. 
Uh, then we've got Pilea peperomioides. I mean, how could anyone miss that one out? Uh, Syngonium. We've got some really cool things in here. Um, <laughs> let's have a look. I will see. I was having a read of this earlier and trying to kind of remember what would be the interesting points to point out. Um, I should have made notes, but I didn't. Um, oh, I did like on here. So we've got Monstera adansonii, and I like the fact that they've said on here. Native to Central and South America, the Swiss cheese vine is often confused with Monstera oblique, uh, which with its slimmer leaves and bigger holes is far more rare and elusive than Monstera adansonii, which is obviously, um, you know, if you have been in the plant community for a little while, you will know that there's a whole like hoo-ha about Monstera adansonii often being missold, I suppose, as Monstera oblique, um, which is not correct. So. Um, I like that they kind of add in these notes um, and include um, relevant details, <laughs> um, which is really cool. I also really like the fact that, you know, here we've got an imperfect leaf and here we've got an imperfect leaf. And, you know, that doesn't take away from the plant, does it? It look, still looks really bloody nice. Um, and I just want to see more of that, to be honest with you. What I think is also really cool is we've got some of the rarer plants in here because I mean you know me I'm not super into my rare plants but as in I'm not super into buying them because they're really friggin expensive <laughs> but I do like looking at them um, and so we've got some really cool ones in here like Monstera siltipicana you don't often see that in um, books which is really cool there's some stuff that I didn't even know like this um, about the genus Geopertia. I don't know how to say that. Geopertia? Geopertia? I think it must be that. Yeah, Geopertia. Um, I did not know um, that it was previously um, a genus um, and then was contested and most were renamed to Calathea and then a series of genetic tests um, <laughs> revealed that it did have um, a different ancestor to Calathea and around about 250 species uh, were reclassified back to Jupertia so um, <laughs> which is really cool because most of these are still called uh, Geopertia uh, when you buy them so um, but that's you know an example of something that's I didn't know which is really cool uh, now we've got a Calathea white fusion aka death <laughs> um, so yeah this Calathea network is actually the Geopertia Kigiljanii, which I probably have completely, um, <laughs> completely butchered. But yeah, um, who knew? And same with the Orbifolia. I always thought that was a Calathea, but no, it's Geopertia. Ge Geopertia. Someone tell me how to say that. Um, and then we've got this is you know the real Aroid meaty bit for for those of you who are into your Aroids. We've got some gorgeous philodendrons in here. We've got Philodendron Birkin, we've got White Princess, um, Pink Princess here, Prince of Orange. And actually they go into explaining how, how these cultivars came about as well, which is really cool. Uh, Hederaceum, Hederaceum Brazil. Uh, did you know that Mycans is not actually a Philodendron um, species? It is actually philodendron hederaceum var hederaceum. Um, but it's just kind of become the name. <laughs> uh, philodendron glorious, which is also the uh, illustration on the front of the book, um, as you will see. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, how I love this plant. What I wouldn't give for this plant. Oh, by the way, I've just noticed my hands are really super dry at the moment. So sorry that they're looking a bit old and, you know, ancient. Philodendron pedatum, ooh, uh, Philodendron sodoroi crossed with Philodendron varicosum, lovely melanochrysum here, um, squamiferum, squamiferum. Need to figure out my intonation for some of these, uh, <laughs> some of these Latin names. Uh, 
Melanochlorum, aka Congo, <laughs> Philodendron tortum. I didn't know that, uh, I mean, a lot of people have been saying recently that uh, Philodendron tortum is very sensitive. Actually, the tissue cultured um, plants are much less sensitive, they're a lot more hardy, um, which might explain why some of us have got more um, easygoing Philodendron tortums than others. Um, and that is what I found from uh, this book. So, yeah, you know. This is one of so many things that I love about uh, the plant hobby is there is always something you can learn no matter how smart you feel you are or knowledgeable you feel you are about it. Um, there's always something more, um, which is really cool. So we've got some ficus here. I'm just gonna start sort of heading through this fairly quickly. I started going backwards there, didn't I? Uh, we've got strelitzia. Um, which will be much appreciated by my uh, my honorary mother-in-law, Marilyn, <laughs> as it is the plant of South Africa. Uh, we've got the Nikolai and the, oh, not that, <laughs> the Regini, um, which, oh, I, I actually, I have a Nikolai. Um, I would love to have a Regini because they are gorgeous. Um, then, you know, my favorite part because begonias just because begonias you know so we've got barre um and we've got breveramosa oh beautiful um then we've got maculata very 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 pretty loving these pictures actually uh we've got maze i think that one is maze nigricans oh wow such a beautiful plant. I really wish that mine would get this big. Uh, Begonia peltata, which I don't think I've come across on my travels, as it were, before. Uh, Begonia rex, they kind of go into a little bit of detail about how the Begonia rex came about, which is pretty cool. Uh, Caladium, um, uh, we won't talk too much about Caladium because I think mine are dying or dead, I don't really know. This one, I when I was flipping through, I was like, that's not a caladium, that's a xanthosoma. And lo and behold, it says, you will sometimes find the caladium uh, lindenii labeled as xanthosoma lindenii, even though it was reclassified in the early 1980s. It seems old habits die hard. And is that not true of the, <laughs> the plant hobby? Okay, so we've got aglionema, then we've got some really very cool anthurium. And all I can see from this page is, from which grows as often phallic shaped spadix. <laughs> um, I don't know why that jumped out to my brain. This one looks really cool. I haven't come across this before. Anthurium polydactylum. Uh, very, very cool looking. And a couple of anthuriums in the middle there. Anthurium scandens, I also hadn't come across before, which is also known as the pearl lace leaf. Very beautiful. Um, which is kind of a trailing anthurium. Who knew? Vichii, I mean, is there a more beautiful anthurium than this? I'll just focus on here for one second. Yeah, very beautiful. Uh, Vitarifolium, oh, that's a beauty. What I wouldn't give for a Vitarifolium. And Boracuanum, same. I would absolutely love to have a Boracuanum. Just look at that. Anyway, this isn't about what I want and don't want. <laughs> Diascoria, really cool. I really like that they've got some much less um, common kind of genuses in here, not just your bog standard rare aroids, to be fair. Um, you know, I do appreciate that, but <laughs> Diascoria doden dodecanura, ornamental yam. Look at these beautiful leaves, aren't they gorgeous? Um, if only they could just put like a website for where I could get all of these, that would be great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, some really, really beautiful ones. They, I haven't even heard of Cremanthodium, Cremantodium, I don't know. Um, and that's pretty cool. That's apparently known as the tractor seat plant. <laughs> Who knew? Peperomia. They do say that these, these make great entry level house plants as they're relatively low maintenance and pest resistant. No! <laughs> ah! I kill them. I kill them so many times. Um, I did initially think maybe it's just because they're in Australia and you know it's easier for them. 
Like this is novice level, okay? It's not novice. How? That's that shouldn't be novice. Um <laughs> because I yeah as I said I initially thought maybe it's because they're in Australia but I thought about it and I realized that the lovely Kathy um, from Kathy's projects um, is also in Australia and I know for a fact that she struggles with her peperomia caparata so you know I don't think this is a novice plant to tell you the truth although everywhere says that it's a novice plant and you know that just gives me rage this one looks really cool peperomia turboensis I'm gonna have to seek that out somehow. And Polybotria, Homlamina, some really, really cool things. We've got an Alocasia section. Ooh, some beautiful ones in here. Um, I'm not gonna give everything away in here because, you know, I think everyone deserves to pick this up. <laughs> Isn't that generous of me? <laughs> Um, but yeah, some really, really cool bits. So, you know, their information is pretty up to date. Um, as we all know, snake plants have been, or I should say Santaveria, have been recently reclassified to Dracaena um, as they share ancestors. I really like that this is up to date. Obviously, in the plant world, it's not going to be up to date necessarily for long, but um, because things are being reclassified all the time. But yeah, it's nice to know it is. We've got Raphidophora here. Um, happy, happy, happy that this is um, often known as an incorrect common name. It says, uh, commonly referred to as Mini Monstera. Other common names include Philodendron Ginny or Piccolo. Uh, they are all members of the Araceae family, but it is near, neither a Monstera nor a Philodendron. And you see that being sold as Philodendron or Monstera all the bloody time. <laughs> we've got Schifflera, Oxalis, um, we've got some Tillandsia, we've got a load of ferns, Adianta maidenhair ferns. Oh, as you can see, these are just absolutely gorgeous. Nephrolepsis, Hupertia, Hemionate. Hemi I can never say that, Hemionitis, <laughs> some lovely ferns, Platycerium, um, they even give tips on like how to propagate Platycerium which I did not know how to do so I am happy to have that in this book, Lepido Lepidotzamia, Raphis, Rapids, Livestona, some really really cool plants in here that I hadn't even heard of and now we've got like a little carnivorous plant section um, and this is just a, ugh, my favorite bit is it my favorite bit it's all my favorite bit but yeah very 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 cool um, and I do appreciate that they say expert care level on the carnivorous plants because I think that is actually you know fair and accurate we've got some <laughs> lovely actually natural looking nepenthes here um, you know they've got some kind of dried out tubers um, and that makes me happy. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, um, they have a couple of index markers. Um, so we've got a green um, ribbon and a yellow ribbon at the bottom, which I will show you in a second. Um, but yeah, Darlingtonia, or what I wouldn't give for one of those. Dionea, Saracenia, Cacti and Succulents. Oh. Now, there's some very cool ones in here and even since um, I got my last um, <laughs> book on cacti and succulents, some of the information has been updated. So um, the, the Senecio, there's a handful of species that were in the Senecio genus and now are in the Curio genus, which is pretty interesting. Um, so that includes the Curio radicans, otherwise known as Senecio radicans, um, and Rolianus, and there was another one, might be the string of dolphins, I can't remember, but um, yeah, didn't know that. This also has been um, reclassified since my most recent book, Winter Sirius, used to be Cleesa cactus, can't say that. <laughs> Then we've got some aloes. I like. I also really like the fact that they include hybrids in here. We've got such a nice mix of uh, different types of plants. Uh, you certainly can't accuse them of being elitist <laughs> in here. Um, so you've got some really, really nice, really, really nice plants. 
and then this one i have never heard this um but why i marked this i really love this bit we're suckers for little weirdos and when it comes to kooky plants the barrier janus does not disappoint and i feel like that just epitomizes a lot of us um plant hobbyists we are really suckers for little weirdos and this one sure is so this is going straight on my list uh common name climbing onion so cool so so cool Serapegia. Now, <laughs> this I have never heard of before, but apparently the um, <laughs> the common name for this is the condom plant. Um, I didn't know this. Or the other common name is Horny Wonder. Um, do with that information what you will. I haven't ever seen that in person, but there we go. Serapegia linearis, not to be confused with the Hoya linearis, which is very similar. Um, Right, I'm, I mean, I'm just kind of flicking through stuff for you now. Um, but yeah, we've got a whole lovely euphorbia section, uh, some echeveria in there, um, and some really, really cool other plants. We've got a lovely ripsalis section, stapelia, kalanchoe. Oh, I just, you know, I, okay, I've been keeping you a while now, but um, <laughs> hopefully you're still enjoying it. Um, sedum i think sedum is the last one possibly not yeah it's yep yeah. oh no sorry uh Sel selenus serious uh, which is a epiphyte um right so this brings us on to the glossary always very very handy when you are using a plant book because there are all sorts of planty terms um that you might not necessarily know so one that i didn't know was um hollow epiphyte which is the second category of epiphyte uh, these plants spend their whole lives on in or on other plants never making contact with the ground which i think is really cool i didn't know that before um then this is i think possibly my favorite part of this whole book is uh the way that they organize their glossaries so the first sorry the way that they organize their indexes so the first is a visual index so they have a picture of each plant with the name next to it and we have it categorized by um care level um so you'll see this one is novice so we've got all the plants that come under novice um, all under here which is so cool I think this is brilliant because you know if you don't know um, what to start with then um, you've got all of these straight away under here you know there are a few that I'm not sure I agree with but you have to consider that these are being grown in Australia so they might have different uh, climate conditions from myself in the UK then we've got green thumb which is the intermediate um, and all of the lovely plants under green thumb and then we've got this tiny little section for expert under here which contains entirely um <laughs> carnivorous plants and then just one alocasia zebrina <laughs> which is uh amusing then we've got plant care index by other care needs right so this is really cool so we've got firstly we've got light and it's sorted by low to moderate bright indirect um and where are we bright indirect to full sun and then full sun then we've got water low low to moderate moderate and then next page that would be i guess moderate and then high i mean who how can you tell between moderate and high i don't really know but never mind um humidity none low low to medium medium um and then medium to high and high and then we've got growth habit trailing climbing upright and then clumping and rosette then we've got toxicity which is i think really important for anyone with plants with plants <laughs> anyone with pets and children um who might be you know interested in chewing plants i guess um mildly toxic and toxic so i think this is really really helpful um to have a decent list and then we've got unknown there as well um so you know treat them as toxic basically if they're unknown then we've got a general index you know the normal alphabetized index um 
as you would find in most books. So, you know, I think they've really covered a lot of bases with those indexes, which is awesome. Um, and then we've got contributors. They make some really, um, really, really nice kind of sentiments in here. Like we've got, we are proud to acknowledge the Gadigal peoples of the era, era I can't pronounce this, I am crap, Eora nation as the traditional custodians on the land on which we wrote this book. We pay respect to the elders, both past, present and emerging, which I think is really important, um, you know, as we live in the modern and more aware world. Um, I think it's super, super important for people to acknowledge um, that, you know, a lot of our land has been stolen from the people who actually have the rightful ownership of it, I suppose. Anyway, um, so that is the book um, <laughs> in its entirety. I know this is pretty, pretty damn long. So uh, well done if you've made it through. I will, yeah. Um, I will switch back to normal and yeah, see you in a sec. Okay, so that is the Plantopedia book. As you have probably seen, um, you know, I, I love this book. This has very quickly become probably my top um, coffee table plant book um, because, you know, I've got my favourite plant care books. Um, everyone knows by now this that my favorite is The House Plant Expert by Dr. R.G. Hessian, I think. <laughs> um, I can never get that name right. Um, but anyway, that is my ultimate favorite plant care guide. Um, this one kind of packs in a lot of things that you um, need to know in terms of plant care. But I think, you know, for me, the top, the real selling point of this plant, plant book is um, the, what's the word? the aesthetic pleasure of the book and how everything is, you know, concise and still informative and, um, you know, you can just dip in and out of it. You aren't going in for like an essay, you're going in for a snapshot view of a genus or a specific species um, and maybe a couple of little facts um, about those. I love how it's laid out. I really, really love the indexing um, as I showed you um, and yeah, it's I, I love the blend of photographic pictures and um, illustrated pictures. And I also really, really appreciate um, small things about this book, like um, how they include pictures of plants that aren't necessarily perfect. Um, you know, they might have browning on their leaves um, or they might be might be dried out or whatever. Um, and I also really like how um, they have a few little kind of ethical hints <laughs> throughout the book. They don't really go into huge um, detail about it, but like they mention about how peat moss um, harvesting can be difficult or problematic for the environment. Um, they mentioned that all carnivorous plants should be um, sourced from an ethical and responsible grower. Like just little things like that, I think really makes um, this book special for me. So um, do I think it's worth the 30 pounds? A hundred percent. If I hadn't have been gifted this and I saw the content, like if I, if I was able to browse through this in a bookshop, I would a hundred percent be buying this for 30 quid. Um, I would say if you can afford the £30, um, then try to get it from a local bookseller um, or perhaps an ethical slash responsible bookseller or small business online. Um, however, obviously it's not always feasible for everybody, so you might want to have a look at um, places like eBay or Amazon for a cheaper priced uh, version of this book. I would also strongly recommend you go and have a look at Leaf Supply on Instagram. So I'll leave their handle in the description down below um, and I'll leave a link. I'll see what I can find in terms of links for this book. I might try and find a couple so you've got some uh, perhaps online um, small business options. If I don't find any, then I'll just cut this bit out. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely, definitely 100% recommend this book. I also think it's a fantastic gift. Anyone who loves plants will really enjoy this book. So if you're stuck for a gift, definitely get this. Um, 
yeah, I think that's all I really have to say on this. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought, whether you're thinking of picking up this book because I'm really intrigued to know. I think it's a brilliant book if I haven't waxed lyrical enough about it. Um, <laughs> please do let me know if you enjoy this type of video. I've never done like a single book review um, on this channel before but I actually I think I've really enjoyed this um, so I would be interested to do a few more um, let me know whether you enjoyed it or not uh, give me a thumbs up if you did um, and subscribe if you didn't give me a thumbs down you know it all actually helps indicate whether or not you like this type of content so um, that'd be really helpful for me <laughs> Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you next week. Bye guys.